Hello. Welcome back to the Space Gulag, otherwise known as PPSW, your favorite hangout place to have with another Star Wars story. Today we'll discover what would have happened had Plo Koon left the Jedi Order with Ahsoka. Before we begin this video, special thanks to our patrons, voice actors, and everyone else part of the Pension Patrol team. If you want a chance to win in our next giveaway, watch to the end of the video and I will tell you exactly how you can win a free lightsaber. Our story begins inside of the Jedi Council chambers. Ahsoka had just undergone her greatest trial. She was convicted of bombing the Jedi Temple when she wasn't even on Coruscant. At the time, her and her master were leading a campaign on Cato Nemodia. They were contacted by Grandmaster Yoda and told to come back to the Jedi Order. Somehow it all led to Ahsoka being convicted for something her friend Barriss of Fee had done. It was an unfortunate set of events, but there was nothing that could be done to change what had already happened. The Council pushed her out of their order, and now they were standing before her, arrogantly offering her the opportunity to return to their ranks as a Jedi Knight. Ahsoka was just 17, and becoming a Jedi Knight at such a young age was an incredible feat, but she just looked at the Council members with disgust. Quite frankly, Ahsoka couldn't believe that the Council could just act so repugnant. Their behavior was disgusting and disgraceful. They were essentially trying to bribe her back into the Order, and that's how exactly she perceived it. While Kiarimundi, Mace Windu, tried to act like it was the Force working in mysterious ways, Ahsoka wasn't really buying it. But there was one thing, one person who made her feel almost inclined to stay within the Order more than anyone else. That was her master. He stood adjacent from her, with near tears in his eyes. He never wanted this to happen to her, and he felt almost solely responsible for it. He blamed himself for not being a better teacher when it was not at all his fault, nor his responsibility for her exile from the Order. Ahsoka looked up at her master as Anakin told her that the Council was asking for her to come back, as he held out his hand and opened it, showing Ahsoka's Padawan braid. Anakin told her that he was also asking her back into the Order. Ahsoka looked at Anakin as he held his metallic forearm out, desperately asking his student, the closest individual other than Obi-Wan and Padawan to family, that she come back to the Order. Ahsoka paused. Her heart skipped a beat as she looked down at her master's hand. Ahsoka thought about it. She felt the inclination to stay within the Order as she looked at Anakin to see his ocean eyes staring down at her. Could she really stay? Ahsoka's eyes looked back over the council members whose shadows dimmed out the room. Ahsoka's eyes went back and forth to Anakin's hands as her heart stopped as she placed both of her hands on Anakin's. Ahsoka closed his hands and told him that she wasn't coming back. Anakin's heart stopped instantaneously as he looked at Ahsoka and saw her face hide in a shadow of tears as she quickly turned away from her master. Anakin looked at her as she turned away and stepped out of the room hurrying away towards the elevator that could take her down into the temple itself so that she could leave the Order. Ahsoka shuffled away as she wiped tears from her eyes. She got into the elevator and closed the door immediately. Anakin held his hand where Ahsoka left it. He couldn't believe what had just happened. He couldn't believe that Ahsoka would just leave. Anakin stepped forward. Obi-Wan tried to step forward to stop him or comfort him or something, but Plo Koon stopped Obi-Wan by lightly placing his hand on his shoulder. Plo Koon slipped out from behind the other council members as Anakin stepped forward and out of the room. Plo Koon was one of the wisest members on the council and he was going to try and console Anakin. Plo Koon stepped out of the room as he looked at Anakin. It wasn't Anakin, it was a shell of the Jedi's chosen one who stood before him. Anakin had a hopeless feeling within himself. He was lost in his mind. Anakin looked out the window next to him and saw his reflection. A tear fell down his face as he looked at the failure of a teacher that he was. Anakin looked down at the ground without noticing or even hearing Plo Koon enter the room behind him. Anakin used his hand to wipe away tears from his eyes as he felt the weight of the galaxy etching itself across his back. Anakin then turned his attention to Plo Koon when he felt the gentle hand on his back. Anakin looked at Plo and tried to hide his tears as Plo tried to make Anakin feel as comfortable as he could. Plo told Anakin that it wasn't his fault for Ahsoka's departure and he needed to know that. In the moment, Anakin was far too emotional to make a response. He looked at Plo and then turned his head back to the elevator. Plo told Anakin that he should be proud of Ahsoka for her decision. It took the teachings of a true Jedi Master to inspire such a respectable decision from a student. Ahsoka would not have made the decision if she had been Kenobi's student, and while that wasn't disrespectful to Obi-Wan, it was respectful to Anakin. Plo watched as the lift opened. He placed his hand on Anakin's shoulder and guided him in. Anakin held his head down as he tried to avoid looking at Plo. He couldn't avoid that this was happening. 
Plo Koon continued telling Anakin that he was a wise master, and his actions as a teacher gave Ahsoka the ability and the courage to not just go through such an unfair trial, but also make the decision to live a life that she wanted for herself. Anakin rebuttaled, asking why Plo would just vote against her. Plo shook his head, saying that he was on Ahsoka's side the entire time, just like Obi-Wan and Shock T. But Anakin needed to understand that the Council was never perfect, and that's why they always didn't make the best decisions. It was hard for them to always be right, because they couldn't always be that. Then Plo admitted that he didn't expect the Council to make the decision, and it truly hurt to see the Council become so ignorant in their decision making. Anakin looked over and asked why Plo stayed on the Council then. Plo told Anakin that he believed he could make the right decisions to rightfully impact the Council. There was more behind those words, but he didn't have time to say it now. Anakin sighed, because it obviously didn't seem to work. The elevator doors opened as Anakin and Plo looked up to see Ahsoka leaving. Anakin asked what he should do. Plo told Anakin to trust in the Force and allow it to guide him. Anakin then ran after Ahsoka as Plo Koon watched Anakin take off. Plo would follow slowly behind as he watched Anakin chase after his former student. Plo knew exactly what Anakin would do. Anakin acted off of impulse, a lot, and was obviously following that trend of chasing impulse rather than thinking it through. But Plo understood. When he had a Padawan, he would have done the same thing. Being a teacher was a great respect for a Jedi, and if a student left the order or failed, the teacher saw it as their own failure rather than their students. It's why Yoda struggled with inner peace after his final student left the order, becoming the 20th member of the Lost 20. Plo could completely understand Yoda's disconnect after Dooku's departure, and he could also completely understand Anakin's feelings now. Plo followed Anakin out to the steps of the Jedi Temple. When Plo got to the steps, he could see Ahsoka in the light as Anakin stood in the darkness of the shadow. Plo Koon closed in to hear the tail end of the conversation, where Ahsoka said that she needed to find herself, find out who she was, without the council and without Anakin. Plo understood this, of course he did, he really did, but Plo also understood that Ahsoka was making a rash decision. Not to leave the order, no no no, that was perfectly fine, but to cut herself off for those who were there when no one else was, was a certainly brash decision. It was rather sad too. Anakin and Plo, aside from Kenobi, Rex, and Yoda, were present people in Ahsoka's life. They were always there for her. Plo spoke up as he looked into Anakin's eyes, seeing the Chosen One still trying to hide his tears. Plo told Ahsoka that he would accompany her if she allowed it. Ahsoka hesitated. She didn't expect this action from Plo. Anakin looked at Plo with shock written across his face. How could a council member just leave for no reason? Plo had plenty of reasons to do so, but he had a certain amount of responsibility for Ahsoka. He, after all, was the one who brought her to the Jedi Temple, and he didn't want anything bad to happen to her. Sure, Plo believed that Ahsoka would thrive outside the temple, but he wanted to be there with her, not for a selfish reason, but for her good only. It was the perfect excuse for Plo to remove himself from the Jedi Order as well. Ahsoka shrugged her shoulders as Plo told her that it needed to be a definitive answer. He wouldn't force his way onto her journey if she didn't want him there. But Plo also believed that he could be of assistance to what she wanted to achieve. Plo along with Shock T were the most balanced members of the Jedi Council. They were the quietest members who disassociated themselves from the Jedi Council and from the Jedi's Republic politics, and they both believed in the usage of the Force and the True Testament to what it meant to the Jedi to use the Force. Ahsoka looked at Plo and then over to Anakin, who straightened his stance and stood next to Plo as if to mimic what the Jedi Master was doing. Plo looked over at Anakin and then back to Ahsoka, who nodded her head and said that Plo could join her. Anakin's mouth hung low. He couldn't believe a Jedi Master that had been on the Council for as long as he was alive was about to leave the Council to assist Ahsoka. Anakin felt a draw to follow in their footsteps. He looked at Plo and then to Ahsoka and asked if he could join them as well. Anakin didn't really think about what all this would mean especially this far into the second year of combat during the Clone Wars. But Anakin felt so dissociated from the Jedi Council, he couldn't believe their actions, and he was so willing to leave. Ahsoka nodded her head, and just as she had done to Plo, and told Anakin that he could join them. While Ahsoka had just given the entire argument for why she wanted to leave the Order, there was really nothing she could do to counter-argue about the two of her role models wanting to follow her and help her in her journey. Both Anakin and Plo knew they were about to leave the Order, but it was worthwhile. Of course, both Anakin and Plo would miss their clones, and but they needed to do this. So the three of them walked down the steps of the Jedi Temple. 
they were going to acquire a vessel, and then with said vessel, they would continue and go away from Coruscant, and get a better feel for the galaxy as citizens of the galaxy. Inside the council chambers, Yoda sat down in his seat and lowered his head. The council members all moved back to their respective seats. They could all feel it. One of the Order's best, the Chosen One, and Ahsoka had all left the Order. There was nothing they could do to stop it. The motion had been carried out, and now the council sat in silence. The sun set on Coruscant, and for hours, the council members would just sit in their chamber without saying a word. They would all have their eyes closed, meditating in their own unique ways. Plo was one of the oldest on the council, and his leaving would leave a gap in the order, especially because his seat was a lifetime seat on the council. Without Plo, the council would have to fill a massive hole. He was one of the biggest heartbeats on the council, a member with compassion that led a legion that was known for its ability to effectively lead mercy missions and reconnaissance missions successfully. Ahsoka, Plo, and Anakin would make their way down to a shipyard and purchase a ship. Before they left, though, Anakin would have to confess to both of them that he was married. This surprisingly didn't surprise Plo Koon. Ahsoka was pretty unsurprised as well. It wasn't hard to figure out, Anakin wasn't the average Jedi. He was very caring and he was also especially close to Senator Amidala. If they weren't married, it would have been a bigger surprise. But Plo and Ahsoka saw it coming, as they asked if Anakin would bring her along. Anakin admitted that they wouldn't, but he wanted to express that he would try and be more open about his relationship. For Anakin, telling Plo and Ahsoka took a massive weight off of his shoulders. It was something he didn't realize troubled him as much as it did. No longer being a Jedi that couldn't be married, Anakin felt a whole lot better about everything. He felt content because he didn't know how much hiding his marriage stressed him out. The three would depart from Coruscant and would go deep into the galaxy. There was a magnitude of planets that they could go to, but the two Jedi looked at Master Plo and wondered where they would go, where they should go. Plo looked at the two and told them that this was their journey. He was just going to guide them when they needed him. He was their support, not the expedition leader. Because Anakin and Ahsoka were much younger than Plo, he wanted the two of them to experience this journey for themselves and enjoy it. Though Plo did suggest that they go to a world where the war wasn't currently at, and also a world that they hadn't been to. Ahsoka and Anakin looked through the galactic map that was a part of the ship that they purchased. There was a planet that Ahsoka had in mind. It was a planet in the mid-rim. It was a planet that seemed very peaceful. She said the name of Lethal, and Plo leaned back in his seat and thought back to his knowledge of Lethal. It had a Jedi temple on it, and it would be a great place for both Anakin and Ahsoka to find and continue their journey together. Plo would obviously join them inside of the temple, but he believed that Lethal would be a perfect starting point for this journey of theirs. The starship they bought lifted up into the air and took off. Anakin and Ahsoka looked out the windows as if to say goodbye to Coruscant for the time being. Anakin had informed Padme about his decision to leave the Jedi Order, and that he was going to continue his journey off-world for a little bit. Padme actually understood why Anakin was doing this, and she supported him fully. While Anakin may have not been fully aware of the stresses of the Jedi Order, Padme knew what it did to him, and it worried her. Seeing that Anakin could freely go out into the galaxy and learn more about himself and the Force without the strict guidelines of the Order made Padme extremely happy for her husband. All she wanted for him was for him to be happy, so she wanted him to go out and find more about the Force. Plo and Ahsoka were also quite supportive of Anakin and his marriage. While Plo had no reason to hold it against him, even as a Jedi, he surprised Anakin by the amount of support he had for him. The journey through hyperspace would begin. Immediately, both Anakin and Ahsoka would talk about the instant relief from their departure from the Council. They felt no more pressure, and they felt as if they could settle down and relax for the time being. Like there was nothing holding them down. Plo sat in the corner of the bridge and listened to the two of them talk about their feelings towards the Jedi. Plo was relatively excited for them, they were finally able to communicate how they felt. Plo Koon wasn't exactly a normal Jedi, he was once a Baron Do Sage. This was an order of priests from his homeworld of Doran. They didn't have issues with attachment, their main priority as priests was caring for others. This carried on throughout Plo's life and influenced him heavily. While Plo had no inclination to fall in love or start a relationship or a family, he was compassionate to those, like Anakin, who felt open to that type of love in life. Plo Koon had the empathy an entire council couldn't atone for. While Plo sat there, he realized that there was much more that Anakin and Ahsoka needed to learn about the Force. Plo Koon was one of the most balanced Jedi on the council, having been the one to discover electric judgment and having been known to be one of the most understanding members in the Order, Plo believed that Anakin and Ahsoka could thrive if he helped them find balance within themselves. 
Without a code to go by, Plo knew that Anakin, especially, would be able to excel in his personal life. The trio would land on the Thal and immediately begin to set up their camp. Anakin, Ahsoka, and Plo had all their supplies laid out. As Plo began to walk through the tall grass, his cape flowed behind him as he looked across at the mass of rocks that stood before him. Anakin was unloading more supplies as his little R2 unit followed him out of the ship. Ahsoka steadied herself forward as she looked at what Plo Koon was doing. Plo turned around and saw both Skywalker and Tano standing behind him, a little bit distance from one another. Anakin placed a crate down on the ground and told R2 to stay with the supplies. Plo waved over the two of them to come over to where he was. Plo told the two of them that they could go and open the temple. They both in unison asked what temple, as Plo told them to step forward and outstretch their arms, and trust that the Force would do what they asked of it. Anakin and Ahsoka looked at each other as they passed by Plo on opposite sides. Plo lowered himself down to the ground into the tall grass as he looked at both of them before closing his eyes. He felt the Force emanating from both Skywalker and Tano as a loud crunching could be heard. Plo kept his eyes closed as he listened to the structure rise out of the ground. The building stopped as it crescendoed in the air. Plo rose from his knees and placed his arms in the middle of both Anakin's and Ahsoka's backs as he guided them forward gently. Anakin and Ahsoka opened their eyes as they looked at the entrance before them. They asked Plo what this was as he told them that they had discovered an ancient Jedi temple. But not to be wary, Plo continued, as he told them that this wasn't an attempt to bring them back into the Jedi Order. This was a way for them to connect to the Force within the Force itself and increase their connection to the Force. Plo understood that the ancient Jedi had a better connection with the Force, much better than the connection that the Northern Order had. Plo explained that the difference between both Jedi Orders and how the Ancient One used a better connection to the Force rather than the Modern One. Ahsoka asked why Plo didn't change anything in the Modern Order to be like the Ancient One. Plo then admitted that he held his position on the Council because he knew he would outlive Yoda, and assuming that he would become Grand Master as the eldest member on the Order, he would push the Order back into the Ancient Ways. Anakin asked if that's why Plo was always so quiet. Plo nodded his head. While Plo admitted that it sounded a bit selfish off the tongue, he was doing it because he wanted to help save the Jedi from the same desolation that befell the Sith. The Sith became corrupt and then they caved in. Plo believed the same fate would fall upon the Jedi Order, and he wanted to be the anchor to save the Order from crumbling. But Yoda hadn't given up his role as Grand Master, and each time a new member joined the Council, with the exception of Kenobi, Shock T, and Kit Fisto, the Council became more and more geared towards the political agenda of the Republic. Plo Koon knew that it wouldn't last, and with the war, it only cemented its ill feelings towards the political output of the Council. Anakin asked why Plo always went to the Chancellor's office if that was the case. Plo exclaimed that he didn't want to, but he had to play the role because of his lifetime spot on the High Council, and he also did it because he needed to be savvy enough to pull the Order out of the Republic politics once he became Grand Master. But that was years away. How many years? Plo didn't know. As the three entered the temple, Ahsoka asked why Plo left the Order if that was his long-term plan. Plo admitted it was because he foresaw the end of the Jedi, but there was nothing he could do to stop it. Plo continued asking if they remembered Pong Krell. Anakin nodded his head. Plo told him that Krell came to him about a vision before losing his mind on Umbara. Krell had a vision just a month before the first battle of Genosis. Plo believed him and admitted that he would work on it with the Council. But when the Clone Wars started, and the Jedi dragged themselves right into the middle of it, there was nothing that he could do. Ahsoka asked why Krell had such a high casualty number and if that was why. Plo admitted that Krell seemed to believe that the Jedi would succumb to a grand army. Plo believed it would be the Separatists because of the incredible numbers, but Krell believed it had to do something with the clones. So that's why Krell tried to continuously kill off the troops, and Krell tried to take the easy route when the Council didn't resolve the war by leaving it or finding peace. The three entered the main chamber as both Ahsoka and Anakin were completely shocked by what Plo had just revealed to them. Plo then told the two of them to seat themselves on the ground and begin to meditate. They asked why out of curiosity, not discrepancy, as Plo told them that their journey and their paths would be revealed to them if they gave themselves up to the Force. This was the first step that they would take into a larger galaxy. As the three entered their own version of meditation, Plo would be the first to see his journey unfold as he stood up and entered a room. Plo was surrounded by fire. He looked around and then a young man approached him. Plo didn't recognize the boy, but he had similar features to that of Anakin. Plo asked the boy what it was, as the boy asked him to follow him. Plo followed as he watched the fiery landscape dissipate, and he saw the peaceful meadows of Andrillion and Chile combined into one. Plo was surprised to see these places, as the little boy spoke up, calling him teacher. 
Plo nodded his head and continued behind. Plo then saw the people of Barando sages looking towards him as the two continued through another room. Plo looked forward and saw not death, but peace. Clones intermingled into galactic society with Jedi around those helping people out. Plo turned around as he saw Anakin, a bit older with some wrinkles and hair like Qui-Gon down the middle of his back. Next to him was Ahsoka with longer tails and a more mature face with two lightsabers, completely different to the ones that she currently had. The boy standing next to Plo grabbed his hand and said to Plo, referring to him as master, that Anakin was his father. Plo looked down and then over to the Skywalkers, Anakin called out Luke's name and the little boy ran over and leaped up into his father's arms. Anakin told Luke to say goodbye to Auntie Ahsoka. They were going to go visit Padme. Plo watched as Anakin thanked Plo for helping him. Plo looked over his shoulder as he watched Anakin get into his speeder with his boy and go away. As Ahsoka bowed to Plo and turned around and began walking away as well. Plo stood between the two who left Coruscant with. They were on Coruscant and it seemed as if there was a new Chancellor. Plo then stumbled out of his vision and looked around to see both Anakin and Ahsoka gone. It seemed as if they had both entered their respective visions. Ahsoka's vision saw her surrounded by light as she looked around trying to calm her mind. Ahsoka then saw an older version of herself, the same one she encountered on Mortis not so long before. The older version of herself said that she was on the right path. She needed to trust who she had because they could save her when she needed them to save her. Ahsoka looked back over her left and saw a massive city. The older Ahsoka vanished in thin air as Ahsoka turned and started walking towards the city. She heard a voice call out in a dark, slimy tone, saying that he was looking for Kenobi. Ahsoka turned to see a red lightsaber heading towards her face. Ahsoka turned around as she opened up her eyes and looked into darkness. She couldn't see anything, and then she heard a voice of her master. He called out to her and thanked her for her courage that she had. Ahsoka turned around and then saw a hooded man crawling over Anakin as he cried out for her help and drowned in suffering. Ahsoka tried to help, but before she could get to Anakin, she was suffocated out of the vision. Ahsoka tumbled back and looked at Plo, who was still sitting in his meditative state. Anakin, on the other hand, was gone. Anakin walked through a tunnel in his vision. He stepped forward and saw a reflection of himself in the pool of tears. Anakin looked at the reflection as his face began to mold into destruction and pull itself out of the water. Anakin heard a heavy breathing as he turned around to see a masked figure with a red lightsaber marching towards him. The voice from the metallic beast said that Anakin's lack of faith was disturbing. The mechanical monster reached out his hand and forced him through a wall as Anakin stood in a forest. He looked around and heard someone scream the name Traitor as a hooded smaller man crept around the corner of some trees as he looked at Skywalker and ignited a red crossblade lightsaber. Anakin looked at him and recognized some familiar features on the young man's face as he was lifted out of the vision with the crashing sound of an explosion. Anakin turned around and looked at a discombobulated face that looked like a combination of people he knew from all being mentors. And then this combination of faces tried to rip through him with a crimson lightsaber. Anakin darted back as he fell back through and looked over to see Plo and Ahsoka still meditating. The three of them then got up after about an hour of meditation. This trip was completely successful. Each member had a revealing vision about the future. Which ones would come true? Only time would tell. But there was a possibility for failure, happiness, success, and tragedy. The future, though, could only be impacted by the decisions the group made now. As the three exited the former Jedi Temple, they all went back to camp. When they entered the temple, it was daytime, and currently it was pitch blackout. Thanks to R2, the camp was adequately lit up so that the three Jedi could find their way back to their little camp once their journey was complete. Plo told the two of them that they had a couple places he would like to take them to, but for now they would stay on the Thaw until Ahsoka and Anakin knew it was time for the next leg of their journey. Ahsoka and Anakin respected Plo a lot, but this new journey heightened their respect for the Elder, former Jedi Master. He knew how to help people find who they needed to be. Some may say he would have been the perfect Grand Master within the Jedi Order, but for now they were getting a lot of experience and experience that they needed. Ahsoka and Anakin would spend time on Lothal. Ahsoka would go off into the capital city by herself and begin to interact with other peoples as citizens. It felt nice. As for Anakin, he and Plo would stay in the fields. Anakin admitted he wanted to understand more about Plo's way with the Force. Anakin was brave, cunning, powerful, brilliant, and bright, but he didn't have the mental maturity it took to be what the role of the Chosen One demanded from him. Plo and the rest of the Council understood this, because Anakin was a normal 20-year-old who spent the last 11 years within the Order. If he was raised inside the Order, it'd be much different, but that wasn't the case. 
Plo Koon knew what he had to do to get Anakin to see and to be where he needed to be, but he didn't know if Anakin was ready to get there. Plo told Anakin that he would have to trust the process, become more patient, and demand nothing but trust from the Force. Anakin understood. The process was going to be difficult, more so than Anakin realized, but Plo began with Anakin. It wasn't Obi-Wan's fault for not being able to teach this to Anakin, but it was something that Anakin would have benefited from had the Council elected a member like Plo, Mace, or Yoda to train Anakin. Though everything seemed to work out in the way that it needed to, Plo would bring Anakin to the site of the rock formations near the Jedi Temple. Anakin asked that they were going back in. Plo told Anakin that they were going to scale the mountain without equipment, and then, on the top, find balance. Anakin looked at Plo a little cross-eyed, and then watched the Jedi Master leap up the side of the rock formation. Anakin followed in Plo's footsteps, but without harmony, Anakin slid back down to the bottom of the rock formation. Plo took his time, and he eventually found his way to the top of the rock formation, as he looked down at Anakin. Anakin looked up and asked how he did that. Plo told Anakin that he needed to find peace within himself. He told Skywalker to find that peace, and then go for it. Anakin nodded his head as he cleared his mind from everything. He wasn't a Jedi, he wasn't a general, he was just a force user, he needed to trust himself for the first time ever. So that's what Anakin did. He climbed up the formation slowly. Plo watched and nodded his head as he watched Anakin scale the rock formation. He was incredibly proud of Skywalker. Anakin used the force to propel himself up and then slipped, but Anakin finding peace within himself at this moment was able to use a slip to his advantage as he lodged his metallic hand against the wall and used it to throw himself up. Plo watched as Anakin got up to the top as he reached his hand out and pulled Skywalker up to the top with him. Anakin looked at Plo with the biggest smile on his face. Plo nodded his head as he told Anakin to join him on the opposite peak. They would stand in unison and then Plo would guide Anakin through the intensive meditative process to connect him closer to the Force than he had ever been before. Anakin looked over as he leapt from the peak to the other peak. Plo and Anakin stood evenly at the top as Plo instructed Anakin to follow each movement he made. Anakin nodded his head as he watched Plo stretch himself out and then ever so delicately lift his leg into the air as he moved his arms around. Anakin watched the clouds passing by create a formation and a swift blow away from Plo as he cleared the side of the top of these rocks. Anakin followed in unison as he too lifted his leg and swung his arms around delicately to push and pull the force around him, and then Anakin realized it all. He finally understood. It's like it all clicked in his mind at once, that he couldn't control the force, because he had to become a vessel of the force. He couldn't tell the force what to do, but he could use what the force gave him as a guide for his own potential. Anakin loosened up on pushing and pulling as he calmed himself down, and the clouds near him parted. Plo told Anakin that he was doing great, but now they would hold this position for as long as possible. Anakin nodded his head as he focused on the force. Both Plo and Anakin focused on the force as something incredible happened. The two of them cemented their bond with one another within the force. Their bond was never shaken, never rocky. It was always firm and informative. Anakin always felt peace with Plo, and Plo always saw opportunity within Skywalker. By some miracle, or just them simply trusting the force and each other, Anakin and Plo became a dyad within the force. The two of them would spend several hours on top of these peaks as their bond became closer and closer, tighter and tighter. It was like nothing could come between the two of them. For Plo and Anakin, it was an accidental discovery of a dyad that existed between the two of them that was just ready to burst. That's what made it so special. They didn't seek out the dyad, but they found it through their connection and trust of the Force. The dyad wasn't a master and apprentice dyad, rather it was built through a mutual respect and understanding of one another. Plo and Anakin would stay put as the sun fell down on the Thal, and all the way through until the sun rose of the peaceful planet. When the sun rose, Plo lowered his leg down and looked over. Anakin was still perfectly still, but the movement of Plo turned Anakin's attention over as he too lowered his leg and looked at his friend. Plo bowed in respect to Anakin as Anakin did the same to Plo. All of a sudden, Plo would revolve his body backwards and flip off the platform. Anakin did the same as both former Jedi landed on the ground and looked at each other. They walked over towards their camp to sit down and talk about the Force for a little bit. Plo wanted to understand what Anakin felt through the Force, and Anakin wanted to know if Plo felt their connection deepen between the two of them within the Force. Anakin would explain the light bulb moment for him, as Plo would tell Anakin that the two of them had become a dyad in the Force coincidentally. Ahsoka would spend about a full week inside of the capital city of Lothal, until she eventually left the capital city and returned to her friends at the campsite. When she returned, she got up to see Anakin glow like a real happy man. 
Anakin had moments where he lit up like the night sky, but Anakin at this moment glowed like a star. He was truly happy as a man, and this unsung happiness made him find more beauty within the Force itself. Ahsoka also found something within herself that she wasn't able to express as a Jedi, which was her true affection for life. Not just any individual, but Ahsoka loved the experience that life provided to everyone. The experience was wonderful, and the ability to see and share that experience with others, as seen as a normal person, was incredible. As a Jedi, one was given a godlike status, and it was because of that incredible effect a Jedi could have on people, it got tiresome. Because Jedi, other than their astonishing connection to the Force, were just like everyone else. They did have their feelings and their emotions, and even though they didn't talk about it, they weren't permitted to technically have them. Ahsoka came back to the camp with excitement, and even more so to see the bond between Plo and Anakin. Plo was grateful to see her back, because they were going to go to a world that Ahsoka would be especially happy to go and travel to. There was a lineage on this planet, long lost to time, but their documents and their temples still stood on the planet. Once the ship was loaded up, Plo Koon would direct R2 to plug in his coordinates for Shili. The three were going to Ahsoka's homeworld. This for Ahsoka was a benefit. Going to Shili had an important piece of history and lineage for Ahsoka that she didn't know about. It was told to Plo Koon, and it was promised by Plo that he would eventually bring Ahsoka back to Shili so that he could show her. This was all when Plo picked up Ahsoka when she was just a child. When the trio arrived on Shili, there was an obvious disturbance in the force. It was as if the darkness covered the planet. It really didn't, but there was a hint of darkness throughout Shili, and a former Jedi were going to snuff it out. Luckily, the people on Shili hadn't noticed that there was any darkness anywhere. Though, anyone that was from Shili and had a connection to the Force were already brought to the temple, Shakti and Ahsoka being great examples of such. The three would walk around the main town until Plo Koon came across a solar sailor. He knew who it belonged to. Plo tapped into his comlink and told Anakin and Ahsoka to clear the people from the streets. The moment Plo put down his comlink, he looked to his left and heard a lightsaber from the left. It was Count Dooku. He returned the Shili because he was going to send the Zyrian slavers back to the planet. Republic control of Shili was weak, but with the Jedi here, it would be more resistance than the Zyrian Empire could handle. Dooku leapt up into the air as Plo Koon doubled back and ignited his lightsaber. Dooku landed and struck down at Plo, who bounced back and parried against the Master Duelist. Both Plo and Dooku had a lot of respect for one another. They were very evenly matched in most of their spars. Plo had the slight advantage and had a slightly better win percentage against Dooku. Being from Doran, Plo had a natural strength, and physical strength at that, that gave him the slight edge over most human duelists. People from Doran were naturally stronger than humans, but someone as experienced, fast, and precise as Plo made him an exceptional difficult foe. Plo backed up. He knew how aggressive Dooku could be in the beginning of a fight. That's how normally Dooku beat a foe. It was a quick aggression with Form 2 at the beginning of the fight, though Plo Koon was specialized in aggression, being a master of Form 5. Dooku struck faster and faster, trying to bypass Plo's defense, but it was no use. Plo was extremely quick as he backpedaled away and from each strike that Dooku took at him. Plo saw that he was running out of space as he pushed back, throwing the older Dooku off balance. Plo saw his opportunity as he swung forward. Dooku blocked, parried, and then tumbled back. It was Plo Koon's special 3-point saber combo. Dooku rolled around and pulled his blade up to block Plo, as Plo brought his blade down on Dooku's blade, knocking the count back again. Dooku doubled back as he looked for an escape, shooting lightning at Plo. The former Jedi Master stretched his arm out to deflect the lightning in as he took it all in. Dooku didn't expect what came next as the yellow lightning shot out from Plo's hands and smacked into the Sith Apprentice, sending him tumbling back into a wall. Plo realized that this could help end the war if he got Dooku back to the Republic. But from his right, four Magna Guards popped out and surrounded Plo. Two of them ran back and got Dooku up and took him back to his ship. Plo Koon wasn't having it as he struck down forward, swinging his blade around violently. He knew that Dooku couldn't escape, but the Magna Guards were too good of enough a distraction. By the time Plo Koon cut down the two guards, the Solar Sailor had taken off into the air and disappeared. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of part one. Special thanks to Benjamin Wells, Ice U Raptor, Anakin 003, and for Gort for supporting the channel. Part two will come out tomorrow, October 17th, Monday that is, and that will be out at about 4 p.m. EST. Uh, this is going to be the first part two, part one that we do. Unlike uh, SWT, I will be finishing all my theories for you guys. Uh, that is what I owe to you. Uh, this is just a longer story, and I wanted to do it in parts and just test out how we're going to do this. So part two will be out tomorrow. I hope you all enjoyed. Lightsaber giveaway down below. 
I will be giving away three lightsabers when we hit 50,000 subscribers for those of you that are new. And there's a link, you type on the link, you put your name down on the link, it's a doc, that's all you have to do. Subscribe for a chance to win. Anyways, I love you all, spread the love, and may the force be with you.